Good morning, YouTube, trading game, and uh, everybody that's you know following these uh, new strategies that I've been putting out recently, uh, Robin Hood, namely, and then uh, this is a hybrid of the Fire Move and Robin Hood. So I, my first card was a Trans Am, so I went with the Firebird. It is what it is. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to back test all the days in February, all the trading days. Uh, just so I can I don't have to use replay my indicator will be painted as I move along and just make this a lot quicker so I back tested it back to November 1st and the results were Phenomenal, I mean, I think three losses uh, And even those were less than five points because the, There's not enough time for the trade to really go against you very far and it just kind of petered out the session ended and I was you know negative a little bit so there were a couple times when it went negative and it came back to break even and I just got out and, and you know took the break even. My goal with this is to just win the first trade. The first trade wins enough where it's ridiculously profitable. Uh, the second trade is more of a hedge and it's just a good opportunity just to break even. So uh, it is what it is. You, you know you can even just leave the, the, the minus five points there and just take a one hour loss. You know it's not that big of a deal. So. Uh, that's something I'm probably going to look at too, just to compare the, um, you know, the results between the one-hour losses that aren't very frequent and the five-hour losses, which can come if you're familiar with uh, this trading style and like the Robin Hood approach, uh, where your first trade is a one-hour and then the second trade is a 4x size, but a shorter distance just to recoup or even gain, you know, on the second trade. So uh, for for my purposes, though, I'm just going to just try to break even with a very small uh, take profit on the second trade to make it very you know feasible that it does hit that if I do get stopped out it goes just a little bit further and I break even on it so uh, this trade is it's pretty much guaranteed not guaranteed but high probability you can get five points out of it you can play with it you know um, do different things with it you can trail it you know there's all kinds of options but just as a mechanical strategy five points and that doesn't seem like much but with the consistency if you're somebody that has some size and you can scale and you're just looking for a trade or two a week like myself I've got 20 PA accounts it's over a million dollars in funding I need one of these trades a week to basically replace my income I can I can go full-time if I can hit this trade one one time a week uh, if I hit it twice then you know uh, baby gets new shoes stuff like that right so that's kind of what you want to keep in mind. If you're someone that needs, you know, 20, 30 points in a day or, you know, you're trading small size, you're high risk, whatever, this may not be for you. Uh, we have different options for that. But uh, this trade specifically here is if you've got some copy accounts, you know, some, some uh, uh, evals, PA accounts, whatever, and you're set up to just need small moves to make a lot of money compounded by those multiple accounts, this is a good alternative. This is something good to look at. So, um, in the Discord, I got a channel. We've got a lot of channels dedicated to different strategies. Uh, we just brought on this uh, Gold Digger bot, where they're going to be putting out some really interesting stuff. So, but the the fire the Firebird is in here. It's brand new. Uh, I've got the back test results in it. This is the video of the first trade I took yesterday. And I'll post the uh, link to that in the um, description for this one. I meant to get the back test results in. I back tested live in front of the whole Discord, and then I just waited to hit record until I got into the trade. So it kind of defeated the purpose of, of trying to make it a back testing video. But I did trade trade this live, and yeah, I did long the all time highs yesterday, and it actually uh, did hit the profit target. I was break even on the trade because I moved my TP up, which you know I thought it would go more, and I was greedy. But it delivered the five points that you know that I claim it's going to deliver. So these are my back test results from uh, November first to present. And as you can see, here's one loss. It was four points. Uh, another loss, four and a quarter points, and another loss, two and a half points. Basically, what that was was it just ran out of time. It didn't hit my stop. It didn't, you know, it, it didn't hit my target. And the session ends, uh, you have to get out. So this is, you know, that's a good thing, though, really, because um, if you take a loss, you're not going to revenge trade it. <laughs> so that's one thing I love about this trading this time of day. If, if I lose, I just, I'm done. You know, there's nothing else to do. So 
All right, um, I've got an indicator that takes me right up to the candle, uh, the 345 candle, which is where I take my entry. So when I say it's mechanical, I mean it's mechanical. So I'm gonna buy as soon as this candle starts. So at the open of this candle, I'm looking for five points. And this one obviously, you know, um, five point stop would have been right there. Five point target, easily, easily achieved. Uh, and you know, this is one of those things where you gotta take this into consideration. This fire move, which I've been trading for months, you know, almost every day, live in the Discord, and just hitting ridiculous win rate on it, often provides this kind of a move. And this is why I started taking it. And when I found this Robinhood strategy from you know Trading Busters, the London Strat, uh, it takes advantage of an area of consolidation through Asia, and then you're looking for London to you know um, sweep the highs, or if it already has, come down and sweep the lows. And it gives you this move, and so the Robinhood strategy is based on that, and it works really really well. Well, I thought that if I could use this same type of hedging uh, strategy idea in another place where there's a uh, usually an expansive move that it would also be a good trade so I went ahead and started playing with it in some different time frames and eventually I brought it right up to the end of the session for the fire move yesterday and the results were just ridiculous so we're, we're running with this right now and, and seeing where it goes had some really good feedback on people who have done some further back testing and had pretty much the same uh, actual you know trade by trade back testing. There's some other people who are doing some, trying to do some automated back testing on it, but I don't know what the filters are for that. Uh, it's harder to take out like holidays and day after holidays and some of the, some of the um, scenarios where maybe you, you don't take the trade and I'll explain that as we go. But for right now, this was a win. Uh, if I was trailing this, right, I'd be, you know, under the fair value gaps here. Uh, as I moved up, I would have taken this low because it's a you know a responsible low for a new high, so I'd have been down here. Then I'd have been under this one. Then on this fair value gap, I'd have been under this one, uh, and I would have rode this easily and logically all the way up here for you know, um, let's say I even just went through right here, 34 points, right? With the kind of size I'm using, 34 points, that's my month easily. That's yeah, crazy crazy results. But easy and logical and just following you know your normal trailing type scenario for the fire move uh, that'd be the kind of trade that that would be so uh, but let's just call it for the sake of argument one trade one win five points okay uh, on to the next one all right so indicator takes me right up to this candle and this is easy to do mechanically because you, all you're doing is buying on the open of this candle. So, you know, there's not much, there's nothing discretionary about it. It either goes five points on on the target or it doesn't, right? So there's, um, okay, so that would have been a trade. You buy on this candle, you take, you know, point of drawdown, and then you're up into profit, so. Two trades, two wins, ten points. On to the next one. Right. And this is just a long friendly trade too. I've always, you know, it, for, for whatever reason, no matter where you're at, you can be bearish. You can be, you know, at the bottom of a market maker sell model. And what it's going to do is a lot of times it's going to come up and take internal liquidity on a long, even though you would think it's going to sweep the lows at this time of day, for whatever reason, I can't, I don't know. It's just very long friendly. So that's why I'm just trying to take the longs. If it goes short, it'll be just probably a break even for me until I get more data. I'm on PA accounts right now, <coughs> uh, Apex. So I'm mindful of my drawdown. So I'm looking for, you know, good, easy wins uh, and, and get out break even if it's it even looks like it might go against me. So here's another one we're going to buy on the open, which is here. No problem. Let's 
it's obviously a winner right here too. In the open. Normally when I take this move, um, I was taking it right around, you know, 350. Uh, I was waiting for a run on stops to the downside and then I would just go long and I would hope that my five points covered in case it drove a little deeper, but I would take pretty much the first run on stops because a lot of times it just takes off. And so to sort of balance risk and opportunity, uh, that's kind of what I was doing. I'm not opposed to pulling my stop down a little if it looks like it's driving or I'll just get stopped out and I'll get right back in. Um, and that's not a problem either. In fact, if I get stopped out down here and I get back in immediately, I make up all my money uh, on the loss and then I pick up my original win. And this is something people have watched me do. I don't know how many times. It's just it's something I do regularly. It's, it's just sort of a trade I'm comfortable with. I trade it live every day. So if you want to see me, um, you know, execute this, come to the Discord. 15 minutes before uh, session ends is usually when I'm looking for the trade, uh, especially right now with this one being as mechanical as it is on this time frame. So this one hits. And you can see how easy this is. There, there's no indicators. There's no, you don't need this when you're in the day. You know, you're just watching that candle and you know, you can just get in. No, no PDAs, no points of interest, no data, no fair value gaps, no breaker blocks. Um, not trying to discern what any bias is. Um, I mean, it's just, you know, it's, it's a match made in heaven for, for the kind of way I want to trade it. All right, so this one. Let me open. Okay, so this one went straight south, right? Did not hit my stop. Came back up and kind of, you know, um, stop would have been here. And this, you know, uh, watching this, if, if, if you get all this sideways stuff and you're obviously in consolidation, it doesn't give you your long. Uh, it comes down here. I'm taking my break even. I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to test it. Uh, you know, I'm looking for the big push right away. If I don't get it, then I'm looking to get break even or uh, the second trade hedge if that presents itself. And what that would look like is when I'm setting the trade up, what I'm doing is, is I've got market orders set up in uh, Ninja Trader. This is the way I'm doing it. So I've got these uh, Fire 1 and Fire 2. This is my first one. And it's just a five point target, five point stop with a four point break even. So real simple, I get the four points uh, and it turns around, I'm not gonna take a loss, I'm just gonna take a break even and get on to the next trade. The second trade then is the hedge. And what I do is I just mark it in. I don't like using limit orders in Ninja because it doesn't show them like trade of eight. It doesn't show and let you move them, you know, and all that. You, I know it's there, but for some reason mentally, I just haven't used this enough to be really comfortable with it. So I just mark it in as soon as that, uh, as soon as that candle uh, starts to paint and then I, I see all my stuff and I just switch then once once fire one is in then I switch to fire two and I'm watching it's either gonna hit my target or it's gonna hit my stop if it hits my target I'm done if it hits my stop I'm marketing in short with this one with um, five times the size all right that's the whole point of the hedge I only need a point and a quarter <laughs> once I get stopped out to make all that back. And, and the chances are, if it comes against you, uh, it's headed that way. So that's sort of your logic. You can you can go for, you know, if you double that, you get your one R. If you go to 0.5 or two and a half points, you actually make enough to, to make your, your trade. You get your one R five point trade, if you do it that way. Um, if you make it a full one R, then you're, you know, you're hitting good. But at this time of day, it's not as high probability as it is with the other Robin Hood sessions that that second trade goes that far. Uh, if you don't get the big energetic move right away, you might get a push to the downside, but then again, it's just gonna kinda go sideways and generally that's, you need to test it yourself, try to figure out how you wanna do that. But for me, that's kinda the way I'm playing it. And, and trying to use my results here is, um, to sort of guide me. 
Let me tell this to break even. see what this one is. Nice quick winner. Oh wait a minute, maybe not. We have to get in on the opening of this candle. Okay. Okay, oh yeah. Um, and because of this, in my actual, I called it five points, shoot. Yeah, like yesterday. I'm at 4.75 points on this. I gave the tick back. Because in the back testing, there was more times than I want to count. Ah, shoot. This is going to be off by a tick for each trade. So just take that into consideration. We'll, we'll figure out how many ticks to subtract when I get done. I don't know how many times, enough times for me to say, you know what, I'm just going to go 4.75. Because if it turns around here, then I'll probably break even. This will be a break even trade again. Um... And it's sort of similar to what I used to do when I was um, getting in on fair value gaps, right? Let's say this is a fair value gap right here. What I found myself doing was I would add one tick. Because sometimes it comes down and does, you know, this right here and you don't get in. So I would add that one tick. Yes, if I lose, I lost an extra tick. But there was enough times where that one tick caught me huge moves. And so, you know... Um, I'm a fan of just refining the process, making it work the, you know, as good as possible, and, and going from there. So, six trades, five wins. Like I said, just to keep the numbers round, I'm just going to add five. Um, open of this candle. <clears throat> okay, break even on this one. All right, it went up two and a half, but if I was to, um, There's my stop, and then the hedge from here. I need a point and a quarter. <laughs> right, no problem. So I, I won back my by sizing up and going 4x short right here. I made up this loss, so this is a break even. With Robinhood, we take it down to half R, and we and we turn this into an actual one R win. But because of this trade and the timing and all that, I'm just not as comfortable doing that yet. Um, especially I'll be on my PA accounts, the Robinhood accounts right now. I'm trading on evals and not as sensitive to, you know, the psychology and everything else. On the PAs, I want to get my win or my break even and move on and get to the next trade. That's why this is so nice is because the win rate on just the first trade is uh, sustains that, you know, that method. Same thing here, looks like. Oh wait, no. Um, the open of this candle, oh yeah, nice winner. to say how you would trail that um, I'm debating maybe having the um, doing it on the minute so I can see what's in here as far as you know um, 
go to EFs, things like that, order blocks, whatever, because there might be a little pullback in here somewhere and then it takes off again. Um, but targeting just, you know, some kind of internal range, liquidity, things like that. I might be targeting this up here and then get uh, stopped out on the pullback, which is fine. But I'm not going to. I'm not going to carry it over and try to, you know, um, sometimes it will, you know, keep going up, up. Um, but I just, I'm, I'm trying not to get greedy. I just want to get my, get my base hits, get what works, um, and be, you know, find a way to be satisfied with this approach. Open. Uh, probably take that to right there. You know, you're not going to fade this much pullback, but easy 10 points right there. And you can see the stops are generally, you know, there, there's very little drawdown. This is just a great time of day to trade. If you can figure out this uh, end of session, you know, the, the mock, uh, 350 Judas, different people call it different things. I think this is like, you know, this is all I want to do is sit down for 30 minutes a day, trade this, and go about my life. And that's why I work so hard to get the, um, you know, the, the amount of funding that I have is to make this possible. I don't want to be in the market all day fighting it. I love to trade, but I want to live my life too. And if I can take an easy way, easier way, then yeah, I'm going to do it. No, no drawdown again. You know, easy ten points on this one. But we're only calling five, and you've seen how many, how many points we're leaving on the table with just very minimal. You know, just candle by candle, even just trailing, trailing, trailing. You're going to be up here somewhere before you get a pullback. Easy money. So what I'm showing you is the very bare minimum of what this trade is capable of. got three break evens don't we yep so here's a good example right uh, we've got this low here and you would think that that's where it's going right it never does it never really does take the low does it I mean it's a long friendly trade at this time of day it's coming up and it's taking internal liquidity instead of dumping and coming down here and getting this and this. If I'm in the trade, and here's why this is kind of beneficial for me. When I'm in this trade, I don't take this trade probably. I don't go long on this because I see these major points of liquidity underneath me and I'm thinking probably short. And I might even get faked, right? Um, when, it, when it starts running up and I like to counter trend, trade and I might have been okay on this one because it did it did pull back some but the point being is it didn't run for the sell side it turned around and took some internal liquidity so and that's what I'm used to seeing so on this one um, the open would be here so this is going to be a break even though actually Yeah, easy. So, just for the sake of showing it, so there's your. Am I doing this right? 245 open is here, yeah. Five points get stopped out there. I've got a point and a quarter target on this. And if I wanted to, I could have got the full. Right, I could have recouped the whole trade, and still made one R on most of these. It, you know, and you might your risk appetite might be different than mine. You're going to go after you know uh, the the full you know get the full win on every trade. That's fine. And when I'm on evals or even my cash account, that's what I'm going to do. But on the PAs, different approach. A lot invested in that. That's going to be my bread and butter. So easy break even on this one.
Easy win. Open. No drawdown. All right, point of drawdown. Easy 10 points. You, you ride that right up here. Uh, that's an easy one. For me, I'm pushing my, my take profit up. As soon as I get in the trade, I'm pushing my take profit up to three ticks below the high. I don't fight for the high. Um, I used to, and a lot of times it have come right here. I mean, you can see it right here, right? This candle opened up, did not take the high, stopped everybody out that was scalping this level right here. They're, they're seeing these relative equal highs. Uh, they get in on this candle thinking, boom, I'm going to make, you know, and I've done this. I've got my ass tore up, so I don't do it anymore, right? That's, that's part of getting better as a trader. Figure out, you know, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. Learn some lessons. Uh, I stopped three ticks below. And, you know, almost always I will get that three ticks because it's, you know, it, uh, it, it either it does take the top or it stops just a little bit short, but I still get mine. So, but for the sake of uh, keeping this simple, five points. See where this is going right up here. This is a uh, earnings. What was this? This was the 21st. That was the Nvidia, I think, maybe. Yeah, I think so. Again, very little drawdown. You get in and it's just, you know, it's ripping. Um, these were hard trades for me to take when I was trading the, the normal fire move because I could see the move had already happened. And I didn't have enough data on what happens on a timing based trade. So I would see this run, I would see these levels get taken, you know, and I would think, meh, maybe, maybe not. It's kind of, it's hard to tell. What if I get the pullback and I get stopped out? And I would just watch it run away. And so now, the way I'm doing it now, I don't think about that. I just get in and take the trade because uh, so far it, it seems to be, you know, um, high enough probability to where I have confidence. And that's that's what we want as traders. We want to be able to pull, pull the trigger. And this is the one I took last night that I tried to get that extra extra little bit I did try to get this right here I pulled my stop up to right here thinking I was still short of the all-time high and I pulled it right up to above this candle right here and it went that that far so I would have got my five but I was trying to show out in front of a whole discord full of people in fact we were people couldn't get in I had kind of I had kind of teased this a little bit and everybody was like oh yeah I gotta see this and um, yeah so I, I did that all right, so open. I remember thinking, man, this is terrible price action because it was just it was just dead right here for the first five minutes. It didn't do anything. Then the second five minutes came, and it's still in consolidation. And then I got the little push, and I pushed my stop up, trying to be slick, and didn't get it. But even if it would have went against me, again, uh, I need 6.25 points against me. So either five points for me, or, or 6.25 it would need to literally turn around in this little bitty space to lose right it would need to turn around in this little bitty space after you know um, failing and 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 die in here somewhere and turn around and come back up if it even comes through just a little bit and I get stopped out if I get direction wrong then I'm still fine and that's that's the power of this hedge it's just amazing so this was a winner. And these back testing I'm doing, anybody can go back and do what I just did and you're gonna get the same exact results. There's nothing, um, there, there's no subjectivity here. It's not discretionary. If you're just looking for the break even, take the 1.25 and the five, uh, you can do these same same thing and you'll get the same results. So. Uh, my goal is to be transparent and, you know, nobody just say, well, it was hindsight or it was this or that. No, this is a mechanical entry based on time 
with set profit, set stop loss, and, and here's your results. So not quite through with the month, uh, 60 easy points, nice win rate, no, no stress in here anywhere. This is just easy trading. I don't know what else to say. So um, again, I do make it the 4.75 because in my back test results, and I'll pull that up again real quick. Second trades, winners, occasionally were 6.5, 6 like here's one right here. Um, it went 6.5 on the second trade, so a point and a half, uh, and then it turned around. And I don't know necessarily that it came all the way back against me, I don't remember. <clears throat> I have to go back and look. but. Um, it did it enough times to where I was like, you know what, here's another one, 6.5. Same thing with the 4.75. There was enough 4.75s in here. For me to say, I'm gonna take it. No, no, no. Maybe I rounded them up to five, I don't know. So that's the, the methodology behind the, you know, trying to do the hedge the way that I am and also for the take profit. So that's pretty much it. Um, today will be an interesting day. I plan to be in the Discord uh, trading this live again and we'll see how it goes. But um, I think that's about it. Uh, when you, like I said, if you're using Ninja Trader or something with the ATMs and brackets, it's literally just two clicks. Two, a click for the first trade, it either wins or if it stops you out, you just click for the second trade and it's all automatic from there. So very easy, not having to look for anything. Pretty painless. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up and I'll be planning on putting some live trades out uh, as I do this and I'll be updating the, uh, the notes. We got a lot of people in the Discord that are back testing stuff and we've got a good collaboration going where people are taking a lot of the same trades, especially with Robinhood and I expect that to happen too. Um, people are in the Discord taking the trade. It's, it's, I mean, pretty easy. So you uh, let me know what you think. Have a great one.